All right, thanks for the introduction. Um, so today I'm just, uh, just going to uh, quickly uh, update or present our recent progress on the thermal conductivity measurements of water methanol mixtures at high pressure using uh, tandem thermal refractance, which is an uh, ultra-fast pump probe method. Okay. Um, so why um, water methanol mixtures? We know the high pressure physical properties of water mixed with some volatile are actually very important for many dynamic processes in the earth and planetary systems. And among these volatiles, uh, methanol is one of the, um, like water, it's actually a polar and hydrogen bonding molecule. And when mixed with uh, water, uh, uh, methanol actually serves as an uh, antiphase compound that lowers the melting point of water at zero pressure. And also, uh, it has been studied or proposed that uh, when the water, if the methanol exists in, uh, mixed with water, in the uh, icy moons, that could affect the crystallization process or the thermal evolution process of the uh, primordial ocean within icy moons. So, and uh, in particular, the thermal conductivity of the water methanol mixture, this filter quantity is a critical parameter to determine the thermal evolution and temperature distribution within icy moon. However, well, unfortunately, um, uh, very little data is available for the thermal conductivity of the water methanol mixture or any water mixed with some volatile at high pressure. So here our uh, scientific goal is quite simple that we are going to um, precisely and experimentally measure the thermal conductivity of the water methanol mixture at room temperature at, at high pressure. Okay. So we begin our experiment by uh, coupling the diamond MSL cell with hot, uh, ultra fast pump probe uh, method. So we load our reference sample, Moscow and mica, coated with a metal film of aluminum into the diamond MSL cell. We also load our um, measurement sample water methanol mixture into the diamond cell as a pressure medium to transmit the hydrostatic pressure onto the uh, mica sample. And so once we prepare such a high pressure environment onto our measurement sample of the water methanol mixture, we can perform our uh, optical pump probe method to measure the thermal conductivity of the mixture at high pressure. Thanks. So we use the uh, optical pump probe technique called time domain thermal refractance, or TDTR. Um, so once again, here's a sample geometry, alumina on the mica, and the other side sample is our water methanol mixture. So the laser beam will be split into pump and probe beams. So the pump beam comes in first to heat up this aluminum surface, and that creates a temperature rise, temperature difference. And after some delay time, the probe beam comes in to probe the temperature evolution at the aluminum surface. And that's correlated with the thermal conductivity of the uh, underneath sample mica substrate and our metal uh, water mixtures. And to know or to measure thermal conductivity, we have to know the temperature evolution in our sample. And in this TDTR system here, this technique, we use um, this uh, thermal refractance of aluminum as our thermometer to measure the thermal uh, to measure temperature evolution. The thermal refractance is the DRDT, the reflectivity change as a function of temperature. So what we really measure is actually the reflectivity change of the aluminum, and that tells us the temperature change. Okay. In the uh, lower corner here, to show you what happens in time domain, if you look at this column here, um, the pumping comes in first, and that creates a temperature rise and temperature decay. Okay. And after some delay time T, the probing comes in to probe the temperature at that moment. And we repeat this process again and again at different delay time to map, or to map the temperature evolution. Okay. And to extract the thermal conductivity data, we just compare our raw data as a function of delay time and compare that with uh, the thermal model calculation like the solid curves here. In the thermal model, there are several parameters, but once we know all the parameters here, the thermal conductivity of our sample, for example here, mica, is the only significant unknown. So by fitting the data, we can easily derive the thermal conductivity of our sample. And the TDTR, this technique not only measures the thermal conductivity, but also uh, provides a very elegant way to in situ measure the brown frequency of the mineral of, of the sample. We call it uh, time domain stimulated brown scattering. So once again, here's a sample geometry, alumina on the sample. So when the pumping heats up this aluminum surface, the thermal expansion will uh, create a, an acoustic strain wave like the dashed line here, moving in the sample with speed of sound VC. Okay. And when the probing comes in, uh, uh, some of the probing reflected from these moving acoustic strands will uh, interfere with some of them reflected from the aluminum surface. Okay. So once they form a constructive interference, you'll see a, 
a very interesting periodic oscillation in our signal. And the inverse of this period is just a brown frequency. Okay. So using the very simple formula, we can easily derive the sound velocity of the mineral of our sample. One interesting thing is that based on uh, using this technique, uh, the data accumulation time to get the brown frequency or sound velocity of the mineral is only two to three minutes, and that's much, much faster than the traditional way using the very parallel uh, uh, brown scattering technique. Okay. So let's come back to our real experiments. So we have mica coated with aluminum, and our measurement sample is the uh, water methyl mixture right here. And since we already know the thermal conductivity of the uh, substrate mica at high pressure at room temperature, and the only significant unknown is the thermal conductivity of the water methyl mixture. Okay. So just repeat the measurement again. And go ahead. Yep. So what the TDTR this technique tells us is actually the thermal effusivity of the uh, sample. The thermal effusivity is just the square root of thermal conductivity times the heat capacity. So as you can see here, before 1 GPA, where uh, both the, uh, the water, or the H2O and methanol are, are both liquid phase. So you can see uh, the thermal effusivity of the uh, pure water and, and, and the mixture are actually very, very close. The thermal effusivity of the mixture is only slightly lower than that of the pure water. Uh, the blue symbol is the about five weight percent of methanol, and red symbol is 10 percent methanol, and 20 uh, green symbol is 20% methanol. Th these are all uh, dilute methanol concentration. Okay, but when you go to higher pressure, like above 2.2 GPA, where the uh, the H2O has uh, transformed or crystallized, become I7. In that case, you can see the uh, thermal effusivity of the mixture will become much lower than that of the pure H2O. Okay, and to, to derive the thermal conductivity here, we have to know the heat capacity of the mixture. Um, unfortunately, that is uh, not available so far. So, but for the time being, if we assume the heat capacity of the next one, yeah, it, uh, no, if we assume the heat capacity of the mixture is the same or at least very close to the pure H2O case, uh, we can derive the thermal conductivity of the um, methanol water mixtures as shown here. So the uh, black symbol is the pure H2O, and again, the red, uh, the blue, red, and green symbols are five, ten, and twenty percent methanol. You can see that before one GPA, both are liquid phases. The thermal conductivity of the mixture would be only slightly lower than the pure H2O by about 10 or 20 percent only. Okay, but when you go to higher pressure, once again, the thermal conductivity of the mixture will be much lower than the thermal conductivity of the pure H2O. So you do see the significant effect on the pure methanol, even though it's very dilute concentration. And meanwhile, we also measure brown frequency right here. You can see before at low pressure, um, before 1 GPA, these liquid phases, the brown frequency are actually very close to each other. But when you go to higher pressure, once again, the thermal, uh, the brown frequency that is related to the uh, sound velocity for the uh, mixture, that will be much lower than the pure case, the black symbol here. So you do see a significant effect on the methanol for the thermal conductivity and sound velocity. So when doing the modeling, you, have, you do have to take into account the effect of methanol, even though it's, it's just a few percent uh, wet percentage. So let me wrap up. Um, so here we use a, a combination of dynamic cell and ultra-fast pumper laser technique. Uh, we provide the first ex uh, experimental data for the thermal conductivity of the water methanol mixture at high pressure at room temperature. And it turns out the thermal conductivity of the liquid phase um, is only slightly low, for the mixture it's only slightly lower than the pure H2O. But when you go to higher pressure where the liquid water crystallized become a, a I6 or I7 phases, the thermal conductivity of the mixture will become much lower, lower by about like a factor of two or even five at high pressure. And that means when you do the modeling, the heat transfer rate will be substantially suppressed with the addition of the methanol, even though it's very dilute concentration. So, we, so far we are working on the modeling to provide a quantitative uh, model to try to explain what could, what the methanol could affect the whole uh, thermal evolution or the geo, geophysics uh, dynamic processes within the icy moons. So with that, I would like to thank the funding agencies and thank you for your attention. So we have time for a few questions. Yes.
Uh, we guess so, but um, but you can think about even well, it's a mixture of wait at the you're, you're talking about at high pressure, right? Or the, in the low low pressure phase. At high pressure phase, so, so that at that at that pressure, that would be a mixture of solid or crystalline ice mixed with uh, liquid or glass methanol, and so the glass methanol would just provide a lot of photon. Um, scattering mechanism, so that will substantially lower the um, sound velocity of the whole system. And also, we didn't really measure the block modules, but we guess um, that could be much lower. Is there a potential change to the ice service structure? Uh, we don't know yet, but we do not expect to see that. But, but we, to, to see that, we have to do the X-ray diffraction, right? But we. So well, from the Raman, we didn't see any significant change for the Raman spectrum of I7 in the mixture, right? So we, well, as we expect, we, we, we will not see any crystal structure change on I7. Right? Any other question? So I have one. Uh, what are the, the, the limitation in terms of high pressure sample size that you can use your technique for? I mean, could you go to higher pressure? Could you study other material? Yes, uh, this technique is actually quite general. Uh, I forgot to mention maybe because of time. Um, this technique is actually very general as long as you, your sample can be prepared by a smooth surface and then coat it with a metal film and load it into a diamond cell. So basically almost all kinds of sample can satisfy this criteria. And the only pressure, uh, the highest pressure is only limit, limited by the pressure that the diamond ember cell can achieve. So that means if your diamond ember cell can achieve 200 GPA, uh, in principle we can do the measurement, thermal conductivity measurement at 200 GPA. So, yeah. But how, how reliable is, you assume the aluminum film is your Right, in that case, probe, right, right, we need a metal film. In this case, that's aluminum, but you know, aluminum is not a good metal at high pressure, high temperature case because of a very low melting point. In that uh, high pressure, high temperature case, we have to replace aluminum by other metal like uh, tantalum, which is pretty good. Actually, we studied that. And tantalum could be a good candidate to be used in a high, really high pressure and high temperature <laughs> cases. But depending on the pressure you want, pressure and temperature you want to go, where well, we can change a metal film.